Tiny Rich, and welcome back to the first episode of Chai TV. I'm Carl, and this is Isaiah. On this week's show, we will show you the new changes of the school year, preview the first football game, and show you the do's and don'ts of your fancy new Chromebook. With the new school year, there has been some new changes, and with more info on that, here's Elise. As the new year begins at Ridge, you may have noticed some changes, some obvious and some not so much. So let's take a look. School lunch and breakfast are no longer free. Add money into your account through My Payments Plus and make sure to have Student View app downloaded to easily scan your student ID. Have you noticed this new feature in the bathroom? When you see a roped off bathroom, it means it is currently unavailable and you must use a different one. Well, a new rope has been added in the bathrooms, an old one was removed in the atrium. However, this isn't an invitation to stand around in between classes because the warning bell has been removed. So head to classes as soon as possible to avoid tardiness. <gasps> Pride is no longer being held on Tuesdays and Thursdays and is instead now only on Wednesdays for 40 minutes. Also, Chromebooks have been issued to all students on account of Gwinnett County's new one-to-one -one initiative. Can't get any service? That's because Wi-Fi has been restricted and students can no longer access it. This means you will need to bring your Chromebook to school every day fully charged in order to ensure you are prepared for the day. Our athletics department really stepped up their game this year. The weight room has been renovated and over the summer, our football field has been transformed. The grass has been removed and replaced with turf, as well as an addition of a brand new track. I can't wait to witness all the wins that are sure to take place here. And one of the struggles is a lack of Wi-Fi. I know, Wi-Fi is gone and the struggle is real. Jesus! Alright, since the school got rid of Wi-Fi, we're going to be teaching you the do's and don'ts on how to handle your Chromebook. Man, I don't want to get these Chromebooks. Alright, kiddo, uh, I got your Chromebook. Don't do anything stupid with this. Okay. Man, these Chromebooks are so dumb. They're so bad. Why do they smell stiff? 
Here's some do's, do's and, and don'ts, don'ts with your, your Chromebooks. Chromebooks. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, let's... all right. You always gotta keep your Chromebooks charged. Me that. This is a charger. This is a Chromebook. Boom. Bow. It's charging now. Bro, it's dead. Always keep your Chromebook safe. I'm going to put it safely in my bag. Don't throw your Chromebooks around like it's nothing. Can we go long? Always use your Chromebook for schoolwork and nothing else. Always keep your Chromebook tidy. We'll be back talking about the football field after this short commercial break. The first football game of the year is going to be Friday at Second Year. The tailgate's going to start at 6.30, so you guys better be there. And remember that the theme is going to be a jersey out. The lack of consistent offense has been a point of contention over the past few years at Peachtree Ridge. And our new head coach, Matt Helmer, can write a new offensive coordinator to help steer the ship. Coach Sigaloff is a man with lots of coaching experience at many different positions. Uh, I'm, I'm Coach Sigaloff. I'm an offensive coordinator here at Peachtree Ridge. Obviously, it's my first year. I uh, spent the past five, five years at Johns Creek. Uh, before that, I, I was in South Florida, so um, offensive coordinator, O-line coach, but a bunch of different stuff down there. Been coaching for, uh, for fi 15 years. Uh, and just here trying to orchestrate one of the top offenses in the state. Coach Sigloff's reasoning for coming to Ridge was really quite simple. Potential. Um, ch chance to, to, co to come to Gwinnett, chance to, chance to come to 7A, um, and revitalize a program that, that was once a giant, really, not, not too long ago. Um, we know that the, that the talent is here. We know that the, the commitment is there from the, from the players, to the families, to administration. His offense is running RPOs and getting the ball out quickly. Rumors are he's an extremely fun guy to play for, and with accolades like that, it's not hard to guess why. The, the players here have, have really been great, and we've been helped a lot by guys um, like, like Luke Fitz and w willingness for, of guys to get better. Um, you know, like I said, really a lot, of the, a lot of those guys on the offensive line, um, a lot of guys who've really been, uh, been welcoming, and I think they, they know the things that we're capable of, and, I mean, we're doing a lot of things uh, and asking players to do things that they haven't done before in a, in a lot of different ways. Um, from the quarterback position, the, lo the line, the receivers, so there's definitely a, a, was a big learning curve. And really, it's, it's, been, it's been great. Um, you know, uh, quarterbacks, uh, Hunter Shepard uh, and, uh, and Josh Evans, both really great, really great kids to work with, want to learn, want to get better. Um, understanding how to distribute the football and what we're asking them to do. Um, but I really all across the board, um, Miles Abernathy is, you know, one of our better players, but he's come a long way, I think, since, since when we got here. And I think really it, it's just attributed to the, the willingness and the need to be what we know that we're capable of. With Ridge coming off a 3-1 season last year, the players and coaches are eager to put their trust and faith in a new coaching staff. Ultimately, and, I, and as I've, I've told our guys this, that we have a standard that we set and, and goals that we look to meet, and we're, we're not going to lower that bar. You're going you're gonna to rise to the level of our, of our expectations, and you know, as they say, the, the rising tide lifts all boats. And, but ultimately, we're, we're going to do it not really by you know, me being some kind of genius or guru, but really just let, letting the players be themselves. Um, I tell the guys all the time that 
I'm just going to get the ball in your hands in space and, and let them do all the heavy lifting. So it's really, you know, it's just my job to put these guys in, in good positions to make plays, but it's the players themselves that are going to be the ones that are going to make those plays on Friday nights. And I think that's what you're going to see here and, uh, you know, coming up this season. And our first home game will be on September 2nd against Loganville. And with that, we're playing on our new field. We've been interviewed our athletic director, Ryan Lesniak, on how it will impact this school year. I think uh, we're really excited about the turf, what it's going to do for our community, um, the excitement it's going to bring. Um, from, a, from a personnel perspective, we're not going to have to have coaches out there, you know, painting lines and spending money on paint and um, fertilizer and the upkeep and the cutting of the grass. So from that perspective and, and the, the strain it's going to take off us from a personnel perspective, um, I'm excited about that, but more importantly, uh, the branding and the recognition that we're going to have with this brand new turf field um, is going to be great for our, our kids and our community. Uh, turf is way better than the grass because it's like you can easily do cuts and stuff on there. You can do your steps right and stuff. And like with rain, it's easier because like you don't get rain delays because the field muddy and stuff. Prior to the county um, uh, approving the, the bond referendum that included turf, 92% um, of all 7A schools had turf fields and so it really provided a competitive disadvantage for schools in Gwinnett when we went on the road and playoff games like soccer and lacrosse and um, football because if we're going on the road and we're playing on turf field and day in day out we're playing on grass fields it puts us at a disadvantage so um, I'm, I'm excited we're able to go to this product uh, the company's been great to work with so far uh, the product looks great. They're still finishing up some uh, subtle details on it, uh, but we should be ready to go by September 2nd for our first home football game. We're going to have the biggest end zone letters of any school, any high school in the country. Um, Mr. J uh, wanted to make sure our field popped, and the, the first uh, rendering that we got, the, the ridge and the end zone was going to be real tiny, and so uh, we, we made sure we did it right, and so you're going to have the biggest, biggest end zone letters of any high school in the country, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an awesome experience. So it's been, a, it's been a process that started in June, and, um, and, and they've, they've made really good progress. We're looking at a completion date uh, somewhere in the next week, week and a half. So we'll be sitting around uh, late August, August 21st, 26th, some, somewhere in that week uh, of, of, uh, of time. And then um, we'll be ready to go by September 2nd. Uh, I think the turf is amazing. You know, uh, it makes us feel like an actual like, football program, like a certified one. Um, it's about time we got turf, because a lot of other Gwinnett County schools had turf. And now I feel like it brings a whole new energy and juice to the team. That's all, That's for, all this for this week. week. Remember to follow RVN on Instagram and TikTok for your news around Ridge. Thank you for watching.